Now I'm at a point where I've got the drive side main bearing in a race slid off, free off the uh, drive side journal. I've got uh, a look in behind it and usually you get a, a sort of like a shim cup or holder and then whatever shims may be necessary when the end float is set up when the engine is put together. But in the case of this one there's no shim holder and no individual shims as such just this one solid fairly thick sort of washer but then if it had set the end float to a reasonable level that would have been fine although I did notice before I started stripping this engine down while it was still in the bike and in running condition that it did actually have more end float than the specified maximum amount you supposedly only meant to have between one and a half and three thousandths of an inch when you assemble the engine and obviously that figure could grow a little once the engine's done a few miles but um, this one I think had considerably more than that although not as much as I've seen on various other ones but again I'll be making sure that I've got all the right sort of matching components when this thing goes back together and I've already touched upon the possible lack of a thrust washer there unless we've got the type that doesn't need one but I'm sure I can improve on the crankshaft end float that we had um, by using a cup with various pre-selected shims fitted in it as and when I put the crankcases back together with the hopefully ready to go and overhaul crank and time inside bush setup all dealt with and uh, we can have a nice engine with no play in the time inside bush and uh, virtually no crankshaft end float all being round. Well, here we are with the conrods removed now and I've had a look at the big end journals and the uh, conrods and the big ends themselves and interestingly enough and strangely enough they've got a part number on them but they're not marked with any undersize so it looks like these big ends may well be on their original standard and factory grind possibly but I'll get the crank looked at Obviously, I need this checking out and dealing with anyway, and I'll get these big ends checked and see if they're within tolerance or whether they need a polish or perhaps a regrind or whatever. It's funnily enough, I've got an A65 crank up at Aeron at the moment that may well be ready by now, and so I can probably go up to collect that one soon and drop this one in. Um, the other one's from an engine that arrived here in kit form, which I haven't even really sort of started to touch yet, apart from sending the crank off to be seen to. Anyway, this one, the uh, the Conrods, incidentally, let's have a look at this now. We've got, uh, there's numbers stamped on this one, and the cap, they're the same, they are... 537 so they're okay and the numbers on this conrod are opposite the cutaways or the notches in the big end shells and likewise actually that's a good find the numbers on this conrod also match and are also on the opposite side of the little locating tags on the big end bearings but that gives you your matching um, conrod and cap of course and also can help with the orientation of them but in this instance it would appear as I strip the uh, as I remove the conrods there's the drive side outside that would have been like that and there's the timing side outside that would have been like that let's see have we got um, numbers no, we're okay. We're okay. I thought perhaps one was fitted one way round and... Hang on a minute. Let's see. No, we've got drive... I'll do this again. We've got drive side outside. So we've got the, uh, the numbers at the front of that conrod. And the tags at the back. Time inside outside is that way round. That's it, and we've got the uh, the numbers are at the back. So it would have been that way round and that way round. So the conrods 
have been fitted opposite ways round. So one has been correctly fitted. Take your pick, I'll try and work out which one shortly, but uh, one has been fitted back to front. So I don't think that would have been done at the factory somehow. And um, the sludge trap plug looks like it's had a well, not so much of a beating as another one I saw recently, but I think someone's been in there since it was put together at the factory. I really don't think they'd have put one conrod in back to front in the factory, so uh, I'll make sure that I know which one was put in incorrectly, and if I am going to use them again, I'll put them both in the right way around. What I'm just going to do next, and if you notice I've got the... Uh, the crank webs clear of the vice, they're not um, touching it. I'm going to just gently tap with the hammer and listen to what they sound like. It's not an out and out 100% crack test, but um, I've got a crank there that is definitely cracked. Some might remember that. That came from the £8,000 fully restored BSA A65 a couple of years back. And that one's cracked about two thirds of the way through on the time inside um, Big End Journal. And just, this is something I've never really bothered to do before, but it just popped into my head that today I would give it a go. Let's see, can we see what we're doing there? Hang on, let's take this away. Hopefully. Can we see the crank there? Yes, we can. Okay. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just do this. A bit more height for the camera. There. Now then, we get the hammer and just tap on the uh, sides of the uh, webs. Right, they're making a very similar noise to each other and quite a sort of healthy, sort of ringing sort of sound. Now I'll get that crank out of the vice. I know I'm not using soft jaws, but I'm really not going to be damaging the sides of the flywheels. They're very hard and I'm not clamping up that tight. Here's a damaged, cracked crank. Like I say, that's cracked through the big end journal, and here we are, if we tap this side. Actually, this side is making a duller, lower noise than either of the two on the other crank made. But the bad side, the cracked side, listen to that. Listen to how dull that is. And if I'd heard anything like that... I'd be rather alarmed with the crank that we're dealing with here. You can actually see the crack or part of the crack. There's actually a rusty sort of witness mark started there. But at least we haven't got that dull sound coming from the crank that we're hoping to reuse after it's had some attention. Well, I've got the uh, sludge trap dismantled now and the tube didn't put up too much of a fight being pulled out because it looks like our friend who worked on this engine last actually did have the conscience and the knowledge to clear out the sludge trap and it is pretty clean in there there's uh, I will I'll clean it out again obviously um, the tube came out quite easily and what I often do is I use a spoke a wheel spoke just to push in and hook up into here like that and although often when they're dirty you can't actually pull them out like I was able to in this case it just slid out if they're a bit difficult if you've got the spoke nipple screwed on you can get uh, your mole or if you prefer vice grips uh, as some people call them clamped on sideways so the jaws are grabbing it there and you can actually use a hammer on the side of the mole grips then to shock and jolt this out and that usually gets them moving. I know some people actually sort of tap a thread in there and uh, 
screw a bolt in to use as an extractor but this method as I say with the mole grips and the hammer have always worked for me so far anyway but it looks like even though they managed to clean the sludge trap which is quite a surprise actually they didn't understand that that hole there is for the tip of this flywheel bolt to pass through and locate it steadily in the crank because it looks like a previous attempt was made where they screwed the bolt in and just sort of flattened the opposite side of the tube but then they must have realized or somebody must have realized and turned it round and used the hole but not until that got compressed as a result this doesn't matter too much but um, I'm sure I can probably use a former and a hammer and put a round bar or stud through of the right sort of diameter and carefully use a ball hammer and I'll probably get that back to shape but if not they're not expensive I can get a new one but um, yeah, I'm quite surprised that they had actually gone in there and cleaned that out so uh, fair dues we'll get a couple of marks for that at least